Hi, I'm Alex Grieve, better known as IB Crazy, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to build the Spark Sport FPV airplane. With so many people hot rodding the original Spark, I decided it was time that I came out with a performance version of the airplane with all the performance parts built right into the kit. Unlike the original Spark, this Spark has ailerons that are pre cut and designed for performance. Also, a dual tail designed specifically for this airplane to keep the tail level in a hard bank without dropping the tail or the nose. Other additions include running skids for the front so you don't bang up the nose so much in high speed landings or skidding takeoffs. Also additional spars are included in this kit for added durability. You'll also notice the wing is swept backward as, as opposed to diamond. This makes the airplane a little bit faster and allows it to accommodate a much bigger motor than the original Spark. This plane caters to both beginners and advanced pilots. Beginners will like the docile yet responsive handling coupled with the high durability that this plane get, delivers which will withstand multiple crashes often with no damage. Where advanced pilots will find a lot of fun in opening the motor all the way up and just cruising through obstacle courses or low altitude runs. The great thing about this plane with the, air, with the propeller back here is you can do touch and goes at full speed skidding along the ground, take back off and keep going. Try it. It's a lot of fun. And with that, here's how to build it. We'll start off this build by gluing the wings together. Add a heavy amount of glue to one of the wing surfaces. Once coated, press the wings together and move around to be sure that both surfaces are covered with a good amount of glue. Once coated, pull them apart and set them aside so they can dry. The glue will be ready to bond when it is aggressively tacky. Now repeat this process with the aileron sections of the wing. Do not glue the aileron, just glue the main part of the wing. The aileron must move. Again, pull them apart and leave it to dry. This takes about 10 minutes. While the wings are drying, we can install the spars in the fuselage. Start by cutting one of the spars in half, that is 24 inches long. Then mark it end to end on the fuselage. It should go within two to three inches of the tail section. Then, using a straight edge and a knife, make a cut into the foam a little bit more than one eighth of an inch deep. You don't want to go too deep, but you want to be able to embed the spar into the fuselage. Once cut, embed a heavy amount of glue into the slot. Then, press your spar into place. Be sure not to run your fingers down the spar or it will give you an itch that you'll never forget. Repeat this for the other side of the fuselage. If you intend to laminate the fuselage, now is a good time to do it. Turn the iron up to between 250 and 300 degrees. Then pulling the laminate tight, move the iron over the fuselage. You want to use a good amount of pressure to be sure you have a good solid bond. When done, flip the fuselage over and do the other side. Make sure to go ahead and iron the bottom. Iron all the way up till it becomes very curved. Then take a pair of scissors and cut along the contour of the frame. From here you can fold over the pieces you cut off and iron them back down for a nice solid seam free seal. At this point, your wings should be ready to press back together. Align the front of the wing, then pressing together firmly on a flat surface, press the wings together solid. The glue is a contact adhesive and should bond relatively readily. Repeat this for both the wing tips with the ailerons. Again, line up the front, press in securely, and then repeat with the other side. Now we'll prepare the wing spars. Take the remaining two spars and lay them out across the length of the wing. Then cut off anything remaining. There should be approximately 10 to 12 inches remaining. Starting from approximately two inches back from the tips of the wings, lay a straight edge across the wing. Then take a knife and cut approximately 1 8 to 3 16 of an inch deep into the foam. Do not cut all the way through the foam. You don't want to go even halfway through. Once done, you will fill this gap with glue and then embed your spar. 
repeat this process for the other side so that both spars lay one on top of the other. If you intend to laminate the wing, now would be a good time to do so. When ready, go ahead and prepare to install the servos. Place the servo approximately one third of the way down the aileron section, then trace out the area with a pen, then cut a section out with a knife. I made a very simple tool with a piece of TIG welding wire and a soldering gun, which hogs out the foam by passing electricity through it and heating it up. If you don't have this, you can simply cut all the way through the wing and press the foam out the other side. That works too. Once done, add a little bit of glue to the servo and then press it down in the slot. You want this to fit very, very tight, ideally. I like to bury the wires inside the foam. Take your knife and bring it down the wing, but not along the spar. It is best to move away from the spar as you trace towards the center of the wing when you bury your wires to keep the spar's integrity intact. Slice down deep enough so that the servo wire can be fully embedded in the foam. I'm using my hot tool to cut out a bigger area because the servo requires an extension and I want to bury this plug connection as well. You can use a screwdriver to open up this slot and make it easier to press a servo wire in or just simply press it in by force. Now we'll install the control horns. Take a control horn and line it up with the control arm of the servo. Press it down into the foam to make two impressions. Then take your knife and cut some slots in the foam to make it easy to press through. Then take your locking plate and slide it onto the control horn. Then add a good bit of glue to the tines that will go through the foam to make sure they stick. Press through the foam of the aileron and out the back side. Then add a good amount of glue around where they protrude from the back side and then take the other locking plate, drop it down over the tines, then slide it back to lock the control horn in place solidly. The control rods are made from a threaded rod with a clevis on each end. Thread the threaded rod into one clevis at least three turns. Then connect it to either the control horn or the servo arm. Then using the other clevis as a guide, cut off the threaded rod such that you can get at least three full turns on the clevis into the threaded rod. Connect the clevis then to the control horn. The lower down you go on the control horn, the more reactive the plane will become. Adjust the length until the aileron is flush with the rest of the wing. I find the best place for the receiver is in the fuselage underneath the wing, at approximately the center. Trace out the receiver's contour, leaving extra room because of the servo wires going in and out the back of it. Then, take a knife and remove that part of the foam. If you happen to make a tool out of the soldering gun like I did, this works very well to remove the foam in a nice, clean fashion for the receiver installation. The wing on this airplane is simply glued in place. Add a good amount of glue to both the top and the bottom of the wing, as well as the bottom and the top of the hole for the wing in the fuselage. The film is quite flexible, so don't be afraid to open the section up nice and wide so you can get a good coating of glue on it. Once done, go ahead and install the wing in place. I highly recommend putting a heavy weight on top of this and letting it dry overnight. You can also use it as a contact adhesive and remove the wing, then reinstall it in about 15 to 20 minutes. Secure the motor to the motor mount with four wood screws. I find that the screws that come with most servos that we never use work perfectly to mount the motor to this section. While it's okay if they protrude, I highly recommend cutting the backs of the screws off so you get a good firm bond to the foam as this will just be glued into the back of the airplane. Now some motors have a shaft that sticks out the back. If yours is like this, then take a drill bit or other tool to hog out the foam where it's going to go through. That way, the shaft doesn't see excessive resistance due to the foam, which will cause the motor to possibly burn up. Then, add a good amount of glue to the motor mount, stick it in place, then pull it off. You can re-adhere this in about 15 to 20 minutes. 
I highly recommend taping it in place after you've adhered it and let it dry overnight before spooling the motor up. The elevator hinge is made by cutting out one flute at the joint of the tail. Be very, very careful not to cut through both sides of the coroplast tail. Cut down one side, then cut down the other side of the flute. You're going to want to remove a thin film of plastic so that the elevator doesn't bind up when giving it down elevator. The control horn is installed with two screws and a securing plate on the back. Use the control horn as a template and then use something sharp and pointy such as a pencil, pen, or narrow tip screwdriver to poke through the coroplast to make your marks. You will want to anchor this control horn as close to the hinge as possible without interfering with it to give you the maximum amount of travel out of the elevator. Use the plate to secure it on the back. Do not simply use the screws through the coroplast. The tail on this airplane is simply glued in place. Add a little bit of glue to the tail then, holding the elevator down to be sure it doesn't interfere with the fuselage, install the tail. Be sure that it is perfectly square. The vertical stabilizers being off just a little bit will cause the plane to fly very, very adversely. The elevator servo is simply glued in place. Add a little bit of glue to the bottom of the servo, then stick it down right up against the elevator section on the tail. Then pull it up and remove it as this glue is a contact adhesive and we will bond it the rest of the way later. The speed control is mounted in the same way. I'm placing the speed control up on top of the fuselage in front of the motor to make sure it has adequate airflow. However, you could install this wherever you want. The control linkage is installed the same way as it is on the ailerons. A threaded rod with two clevises on each end. Cut the threaded rod to length so that you can get at least three threads in each clevis then mount it to the servo. You'll want to be sure that the elevator is flat so that the plane will track straight. Admittedly, this is probably a little bit late in this video, but you have two 12-inch sections of fiberglass rod still left over. You can use one of these to strengthen up the tail boom. The tail boom is under a lot of strain, and this is typically where the airplane is going to break in a hard crash. Thus, I recommend installing one of these in the bottom of the boom. Make sure that you extend at least an inch underneath the wing, as it is this place that creates a fulcrum where it will break. Now we'll work on mounting the battery. The battery is responsible for attaining proper center of gravity. Using a tape measure, measure back 12 inches from the nose and make a mark on the bottom of the fuselage. This is where you will place some device to rock the airplane back and forth. I'm using a cheap piece of angle aluminum that I have had laying around for years. Place the battery on the nose and attempt to get the plane to balance, or as close to balance as possible, on your fulcrum. Once the plane balances reasonably well, then you have the battery position correct. I find that mounting the battery about one half inch behind the skids in the front is about where it should be for a 2200 milliamp hour 3 cell LiPo. Trace out the battery contour where you expect the battery to be. Some people will prefer mounting it in the side of the airplane, as I'm showing here, and others will prefer mounting it into the top of the airplane. I'm using my foam hogging tool again to remove the foam. However, simply cutting down with a knife and then removing the foam manually with a screwdriver works just fine. This photo shows how I have everything connected up. As you can see, I simply tap the ESC power wires to power my video system and then pass it through a simple three cell link board. I like having a pan camera so I can look around. It also helped with the nose weight issue since I have a monster Cobra motor in the back. I also mounted my 200 milliwatt video transmitter in the side just in front of the wing as this seems to be the most convenient place to put it. Here's a little more detail on the power connection. As you can see, they're soldered in and then simply wrapped in liquid electrical tape, but hot glue works great too. That concludes the build. Enjoy your flight.